Epsilon Eridani, also known as Ran, is a star located in the constellation Eridanus, approximately 10.5 light years away from Earth. One of the closest stars to our solar system, a K-type dwarf star, the star has long been considered as a potential destination for human space exploration, but is there a twist in the tale? Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we take a closer look at one of our nearest neighbours, and indeed, how one day its problems may just become our own. So, let's get to it. Epsilon Eridani is a young star with an estimated age of around 1 billion years. And if life exists around it, it's most likely in the earlier stages of development. The Sun, in contrast, is about 4.6 billion years old. We know that the star is orbited by at least one confirmed exoplanet, Epsilon Eridani b, which was discovered in 2000 and is known as Aegea. It's a gas giant planet with a mass of about half that of Jupiter and orbits its host star at a distance of around 3.4 astronomical units, roughly equivalent to the distance between the Sun and the asteroid belt in our solar system. So far, no other planets have been confirmed. The maximum habitable zone of an Earth-like planet orbiting Epsilon Eridani would stretch from around 0.5 to 1 astronomical units. So Aegea is substantially more distant, and in all likelihood, probably a very, very cold world indeed. That said, as the star ages over a period of 20 billion years, its net luminosity will increase, and this will cause the zone to slowly expand outward to about 0.6 to 1.4 astronomical units. As things stand, unfortunately the presence of Aegea, a large planet with a highly elliptical orbit in proximity to Epsilon Eridani's habitable zone, does reduce the likelihood of a terrestrial planet having a stable orbit within that habitable zone, but it doesn't rule it out completely. In more slightly bad news, as a young star, Epsilon Eridani can produce large amounts of ultraviolet radiation that could be harmful to life. Although this is mitigated because it is a cooler star than the Sun and so produces less ultraviolet radiation to begin with, the orbital radius where the ultraviolet flux matches that on the early Earth lies it just under 0.5 astronomical units this time, so it's just inside the habitable zone. And this has led some researchers to conclude that there's not actually enough energy from ultraviolet radiation that reaches into the habitable zone for life to ever get started around this young Epsilon Eridani star. So it may be that if the star is to have life around it, it may actually just be ourselves in the reasonably near to middle term future of human history. Of course, as technology advances, scientists and space agencies currently contemplate the possibility of sending robotic probes, or perhaps even crewed missions to study this neighbouring star system more closely. And again, given its young age, the exploration of Epsilon Eridani should provide valuable insights into the formation and evolution of planetary systems, and as well expand our understanding of habitable zones and indeed the potential life beyond our solar system. And this is all very well, but there is unfortunately a big catch. Epsilon Eridani's current projected trajectory through the Milky Way is on a collision course with another local star, Leuton 7268. Leuton 7268, also known as UVC tie, is a binary red dwarf system currently located approximately 8.7 light years from Earth. As the two systems approximate each other in about 31,000 years, gravitational interactions are anticipated to influence the trajectories of the stars, and crucially, could potentially affect the planetary systems within them. Such interactions could lead to changes in the orbits of planets, including even potential ejections of some bodies from the systems, or indeed the formation of new orbits for the celestial bodies that are currently there. Current projections estimate that Leuton 7268 will pass within approximately 0.93 light years of Epsilon Eridani. Some believe that close stellar encounters within one light year may actually be more commonplace than previously believed and it does offer a possible explanation for peculiar trajectories observed in other star systems, a bit like Proxima Centauri, or indeed Sedna within our own solar system. Obviously, the consequences of such encounters are complex and do depend on varieties of factors, and while effects on the planets orbiting Epsilon Eridani and indeed Leuton 7268 are challenging to predict, we should be able to look at the goings-on from afar, or indeed will it be closer by? Because in some ways, the real question is, is that in 31,000 light years, when this encounter is supposed to happen, humans may well actually be inhabiting the Epsilon Eridani system. Assuming we don't wipe ourselves out in the next few years by continuing to elect narcissistic madmen, in the context of human exploration, it seems likely that future generations of spacefarers may witness the effects of this celestial encounter. 
currently Epsilon Eridani is some 99 trillion kilometers away, but it does probably hold a special place in the future of human space exploration. As for Leuton 7268, the likelihood of humanity colonizing it too seems slightly less likely given that it's a binary red dwarf pairing, and crucially, both stars are prone to huge red dwarf star solar flares, making stability within any planetary body, or indeed presumably, even any O'Neill cylinder in the vicinity, very unstable. But even so, it's both systems that will obviously be affected, and it could even be argued that as Epsilon Eridani is the larger of the stars, it's really the Leuton 726 system that will take the larger brunt of the problems. It seems to me predicting the specifics of human exploration 31,000 years into the future is obviously difficult. But that said, it certainly seems to be within the realms of possibility that humans should quite likely have deployed technology to embark on such interstellar journeys. Advanced fusion or antimatter propulsion could by then have made travel to neighbouring stars a possibility. Indeed, orbital habitats, space stations or perhaps other artificial structures could well be commonplace by then, and not just around Epsilon and Odani, but also around Alpha Centauri, Proxima Centauri, Barnard's star or even perhaps the Lumen 16 brown dwarfs, and even possibly Alpha Canis Majoris or Sirius, supporting large populations living and working in space. Robotic spacecraft and artificial intelligence would probably have already played a significant role in such exploration by then. Initially, let's say in the next two to five hundred years, is it unreasonable to suspect that autonomous probes, equipped with advanced AI, might well have been used by then for long-term duration missions? And 31,000 years later, it seems a long way in the future to rule anything out at this point. In fact, it seems pretty certain to me that by then, we probably won't even be humans anymore, and may well have discovered the secrets of consciousness, uploading ourselves into more robust bodies than our fragile apology that we're presently subjected to. It may even be the case that the Epsilon Eridani Leuton 726 encounter will thrive with space tourism and commercial ventures, taking advantage of the unusual circumstances of such a close encounter in our nearby vicinity. The nearby star of Epsilon Eridani is one of the most potentially hospitable stars near to our solar system, but it comes with a catch. In 31,000 years, a close encounter with another local system, the red dwarf binary pairing of Leuton 7268, could create havoc inside an otherwise stable system. The question of whether humanity will be around to see it is unanswered, but if we are, it will no doubt be a cosmic event of epic proportions in our local area of the Milky Way. Some consider such encounters could be more commonplace than we think, and it remains possible that in the past our own sun survived, and indeed thrived from such events. The only thing that remains to do now is to wait out those 31,000 years and enjoy the end stellar ride. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and it could just be your idea next week that shows up. Take good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.